Okay, so we will start with a slight recap from yesterday. But we're going to see it inside in the Makoras today a little bit, a little bit clearer. So the topic, and I, I do suggest when you get a chance, Kobe, to have a look at it on, on, on YouTube, because we did, we, I did, gave it quite a broad-ranging <laughs> introduction. We did some Mignone Hashkoff as well, I put in some um, American law. We spoke about Roe v. Wade, we spoke about Dobbs, we spoke about the, the German Grundgesetz as well, and some of the uh, uh, interesting comments and the sort of the cultural and Hashkoffic background. Uh, medicine and science does not exist in a, in a cultural or societal vacuum. Unlike Torah, okay. yeah, um, Lord Jacobovitz kind of has a, a very, um, a very one of his books, a beautiful book. But the, the title always struck me tremendously. It's called "The Timely and the Timeless," which in English works beautifully. It's very an, a very elegant turn of phrase. Timely means that it's relevant. It, it's fresh. It speaks to me here today. Now, Torah has something to say, as you know, on absolutely everything. So it's both timely. But it is, it's not rooted in a Weltanschauung or in a, a Zeitgeist, in, a, in, a, in something. It's not a response and a reaction to the social mores, to what people believe today, which they can believe differently tomorrow, and, and things evolve. And, and it, it's rooted in something eternal. It's rooted in something which is unchanging. Um, so we spoke, we spoke quite a bit about that yesterday. But having said that, we did get started, and today we will really want to dig in. Okay? Very excited. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I told you to pass me my water, please. Sorry. I've got a bit of a sore throat. <coughs> Fine. Let's go. So, I think what we're going to have to do is, we are going to have to... Um, well, we start with the Posuk, which I, I, I yesterday. Shoifeich dam ha'odom ba'odom... Domo Yishafech. Yes? Yeah. Posting this week's parasha. Somebody who spills blood. The, it was a different sheet that we used yesterday. Um, it was this one, actually. But Shafech Dam Ha'odom Ba'odom Domo Yishafech. And the Gemara says in Sanhedrin, on the Zion on the base, we can look at it. It's right at the top of page one here. Okay? <coughs> First source on page one here. Right? It's so a Gemara in Sanhedrin, on the Zion on the base. Vos state. Mishum Rabbi Shmuel Amru Af Al Ha'ubrin Bnei Noyach are it is a capital offense. They are culpable if they destroy a fetus, right? They are Muslim even on the Ubrin. Minohan Amili. The Gemara says, "What is the uh, source? What is the makayr for this?" And eventually, the Gemara comes to the, the bottom of that column, as you can see. My Tamid Rabbi Shmuel Dechsev Shevich Tam Ha'Adam Ba'Adam Dama Yishafich. Very interesting phrase. Shoifech dam ha'odom ba'odom. Somebody who spills the blood of a man inside a man. Where do you find an odom inside another odom? Ezehu odom, shehu b'toi ba'odom, have a ze uba shebi mei imoi. It's referring to a fetus. Uh, there's a comment here in, in, in Rashi that, of course, the, 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 uh, we won't go into it, but just uh, it's, it's underlined there for your for your just for your convenience, that there is a concept of a nafel. As long as we know that this uh, it is a viable fetus, it's kolulei chodoshov, it's, it's fully formed, then the, um, it, the, that it is an odom inside another odom, and this therefore becomes a, a, um, a culpable, a, a capital offense. A capital offense. So and if you look... There's a difference what kind of fetus... Like, potentially. Kind of Hold that thought. We'll come back to it a, a lot later. And this is then codified by the Rambam. Turn to page three. Page three, bottom right. Rambam Shaftim Hilchas Malachim Perak Tes Halachadalad says the Rambam Ben Noyach Shehorag Nefesh Afilu Uber B'mei Imoi Neherag Olav. A Ben Noyach. This is a pasuk in Noyach. It's part of Hashem's covenant with the world. Right? With the Bnei, Bnei Noyach. So, and this is uncontested. There isn't any Poisek that argues with this. This is accepted normative halacha. A Ben Noyach that kills a, another soul, even if it is a fetus, Neherag Olov, it is a capital offense. Mm -hmm. he, he, he would be, he would be Chayv Misa. Okay? 
Fine. The question that we then need to ask ourselves is, what about um, what about for a for a Jew? This is a venoyach kills. So what is the what is the situation with something which we know which the Torah talks about only in in regard to a venoyach? So for this we turn turn to page two. <coughs> And again, this is all. This is very, still very introductory. We're going to revisit some of these things a little bit later. Um, it, this, this is probably going to take us, I reckon, because it's so complex and there's so many different things we're going to bring in. I reckon it'll take us two weeks, probably, probably. This sugya, okay? But on the, on the, you know, as we're going through it, we're going to discover lots of fascinating stuff which we can apply in many different mm-hmm. situations. So here is a very important Gemara for your general knowledge. Mm-hmm. Amen. The Gemara here, top of page two, it's Sanhedrin, Daphne, and Tesla, and Aleph. <clears throat> and the Gemara is commenting on the Mishnah. The Mishnah says that something that was stated in the Torah, Libnei Noyach, go to the top of that top of that column of Gemara there, yeah? Libnei Noyach, Veloi Nishnes B'Sinai. Something that was said to Bnei Noyach, but was not repeated in Sinai. So the Mishnah says, Li Yisrael, Nemra Veloi Libnei Noyach. That means that the authority of this is ironically is it was said for Bnei Noach, not repeated in Sinai, says the Mishnah, it actually then applies to Yisrael, but not to Bnei Noach. And the Gemara says, I don't understand this. Surely, and a rabbi, I would have thought the opposite, asks the Gemara. Middle is Sinai, from the fact that it was only said to the Bnei Noach and not repeated in Sinai, surely, therefore, I would have drawn the opposite conclusion, that it was said only for the Bnei Noach, but only Yisrael. Answers the Gemara, Leka midam, there is no such thing, it's underlined here. And this, we will see significantly later that Sitzeliezer discusses this. But for the moment, it seems to be an uncontested maxim, a concept, a, 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 a halachic axiom, a principle. That what? Leka midam de Yisrael shari ulaivad kechavim asa. There is nothing in which a Gentile may not do it. But we may do it. Hmm. Oh, Myridic. Yeah. Kala come on. Toys for to your question. Okay. We're going to see that right now. Awesome. Great. See if you can come up with the answer. Here's his question. Nochamot. The Gemara says, principle. Lekamidam. There is no such thing that a Gentile can't do it, but we can. And therefore, from the fact that, why is that relevant to why am I bringing this in here? Because what did we see? We saw that it says in this week's passion for Bnei Noach that abortion is a capital offence. It would therefore follow, at the very least, that it would be certainly permi- uh, 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 prohibited to for a Jew to do as well, because there's no such thing. There cannot be, we cannot countenance the idea that there is something which a Gentile can't do, but we are allowed to do. Therefore, abortion, by inference, by implication from this Gemara, abortion must be prohibited also for a Yisrael. It can be asked a good question. What do you mean that, 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 that there's, there is nothing which a, 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 a Gentile is not allowed to do, but we are? Shabbos. Answer. Come on, see if you can work out the answer. Think about the language. There is nothing which is mutta for a Jew. Is Shabbos mutta for a Jew? It's, it's Oh, it's a mitzvah. Ah. We're not talking about a mitzvah. Okay. But well done. You know what? I wasn't going to do it right now, but let's hop into it. Go, go on, the, on, on the left side here. Toysus. So Toysus says, B'dava shehu mitzvah li Yisrael. Toysus starts up and says, yeah, let's go through the Toysus. B'dava shehu mitzvah li Yisrael. Layomrin on hachi. Of course we're not going to apply this concept to something which is a mitzvah. Da'ivu kechavim sheshavas chayev. We know a goy who keeps chayev, a ben noach who keeps Shabbos, is chayev misa. He's not allowed to keep Shabbos. Whereas in Yisrael mitzvah. It is true on Monday there is no mitzvah for Yisrael. But he always has the mitzvah of Shvisas Shabbos. Even on a Monday there is a mitzvah that he's not allowed to do malacha on Shabbos. In other words, we're talking about a mitzvah. Mitzvah is not included in this. We're talking about prohibitions. Okay? We're talking about Yisurim. Great, Gabby. Good thinking. Now, underlined, this is the big question. The al ha'ubrim, the oved kechavim chayev, the Yisrael potur. Look at this. What does Tosa say? Well, Tosa says, one minute, 
I have a challenge to this principle. What is the challenge? Abortion. Because we know from the Gemara that we saw that for a Gentile it is Asa. And what does Tosa say? The Israel Potter. A Israel is Potter. Sounds like, well, first of all, how does Tosa know Israel is Potter? That's something we're going to have to see. Yes? Mm -hmm. um, one minute. What's that going on? What's that little... Oh, it's a half. Sorry. Um, so, first of all... First of all, look at the immediately... Can you see? Uh, uh, it's, it's, one, it's printed from one of these modern Gemaras. So you have on the... the, the you have a little half there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Right next to the after the word Yisrael Potter in the Tosis, yeah, you have a little chaf. Go down to the bottom right hand corner, mm -hmm. and it's underlined there for you. Chaf, Rabbi Yaakov Emden writes about on this Tosis. Look at this; it's quite a very bold statement. Enoi Meduyak says Tosis is not his language is imprecise. Mm -hmm. Why the man who does shari la regis uber belitam. Who on earth, says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, would, would say that a Jew can go ahead and kill a, um, a fetus for no reason? Even though it could be that, as we're going to discuss, as we're going to discover, that if you kill an Uber, maybe you, you don't get put to death for it. It could be it's not at the same level with the same severity. But nobody would suggest that you can just wantonly you know, uh, uh, willfully, for no particular reason, no good reason, just go ahead and, uh, and, and, and abort a fetus. Chas v'shalom. No way. So he says, therefore, Tosus, he's obviously not implicating Tosus and uh, saying something that's wrong. He just said it's in a meduyik. Tosus' is not, it's not precise. Why? Because it says, over kechavim, Tosus is asking a question. He says, Ubrim, over kechavim is chayev, and Israel is potur. This is a challenge to this principle. Says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, he doesn't mean that a, a Yisrael can just go ahead and do it. It means that maybe he's not Chayiv Misa. Maybe a Yisrael is not Chayiv Misa. Now, Tosas hasn't told us yet where he gets this from. How do we know at this stage that, a, a, um, that it's different for a Yisrael? We're going to have to see that in a minute. Okay? But either, nevertheless, Tosas very clearly assumes... And I don't know if you remember, Gabby, we did actually see this yesterday. We did actually see this yesterday. I'm going to put you all out of your misery in one minute. Uh, <clears throat> but Tosis is making a, bi a big assumption here. What's Tosis assuming? That a Gentile, we know we can see a gent for a Gentile to kill a fetus, it's a capital offense. Whereas he says for Yisrael, it's not. How does he know? Where does he say this? You mean neither? Very good. Let's immediately, before we even get to the answer, just go skip to just underneath that. There's a one-liner there. Mishnah in Nida. Tinok ben Yemechod, Noichel Umanchil. We'll leave that out for the moment. Vahahoir Goichayev. Somebody says the Mishnah who kills a day old infant is Chayev Misa. It's a capital offense. What's the absolute implication and inference from that Mishnah? Yes, 5%. I'll say it again. Come on, guys, wake up. Let's get some fresh air. What's going on over here? A day old, Tinoik says the Mishnah in Nida, a day old Jewish infant. If you kill a day old Jewish infant, Yochayev. What's the obvious implicate inference? The Diuk? That is Misa. What is our topic? What is our subject? Abortion? Yes. Again, okay. the, I'm not letting you get away with this. The Mishnah says that if you kill a day-old ah. Jewish infant, you're high of Misa. That's not abortion, that's murder. Correct. The implication being that if you were to abort him right. whilst inside right. the womb, it would be fine. Yeah, yeah, right. Hello. Let's get some fresh air here. Do me a favor, open your window. That's not, it's obviously not, it's not working. <laughs> Hello. And we actually saw that Mufurish, we saw it yesterday in the Ramban in Nida, Chedusha Ramban in Nida, okay? And we're going to see a Tosus, a very important Tosus coming up very shortly. That's Bosha, no? Yeah. <laughs> the day old Jewish infant, if you kill him, you're, you're, it's murder. The implication is very clear that if you do it, you know, a day before he's born, 
He's not. And that's where Tosus gets it from. That's where Tosus gets it from. Let's go back to Tosus. Tosus, from the Akasha. It says, Tosus, you, the Gemara here in Sanhedrin, Nun Tess, has laid down a halachic principle, a universal halachic principle, or so it seems, that there is nothing which a Gentile is not allowed to do, and we are. No such thing. There, you were, you were using a new, new set of yeah, notes. Yeah, old one also, but... Yeah. Okay, fine. We're actually no, doing... We're on page two. Yeah. We're on the top of page two. And we're doing, we're doing a toast. So I'll, quickly, I'll, I'll quickly bring you into the, to the, to the topic. The Gemara has said that there is no such thing. There is nothing which a Gentile is not allowed to do and we are allowed to do. Okay? That's a... Asks Tosus. Not true. Abortion. Because we know from the Gemara elsewhere in Sanhedrin that for a Gentile, for a Ben Nayach, abortion is a capital offense. And for a Jew, we saw from the Mishnah in Nida that if you kill a day-old infant, you're high of me. So the implication being that if you kill it before he's born, it's okay. So there you do have, there you have a challenge to this example. That's Tosus' question. Answers um, Tosus. So we're on the Tosus here at the top of page two, yes? Left-hand side. Says Tosus, okay, it's true. Avogad de Potur. Even though it's Potur meaning. What does Potur mean over here? Potur means that you, you, it's not a cap. True, it's not a capital offense. Mikol Mokim Shari. But it's not permitted. Nobody would suggest, says Tosus. Whatever your inference from the Mishnah in Nida is, nobody or at least Tosa says, the halacha is, Tosa says very clearly, it is forbidden to abort a Jewish a fetus. It is forbidden. It is true. You can't argue with the very clear inference from the Mishnah that it's not a capital offense. But it is still forbidden. Now here, this raises... So therefore, in other words, go, let's go back to the Gemara upon which we based our challenge. The, the, the Gemara said that what? There, you can't have anything which for a Ben Nayach is forbidden and for a Jew is permitted. Tosus understands that to be very literal. That something which is forbidden for them and for us is totally okay. But as long as both are forbidden, it could be they can have, a, it can be more strict for them than it can be for us. That's okay. But what you can't have is that for them it's no good and for us it's absolutely fine. That's how Tosus understands. Okay? But Tosus leaves as many questions as he tries to answer, which is we are now left scratching our heads, trying to understand what is the ab actual, what is the source? What is the reason? Is it, is it murder? Is it, you know, in, 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 the, in the secular legal system, you have murder in the first degree, murder second degree. I'm not sure how it works over here, but uh, premeditated, you have manslaughter. Okay, but even murder. So is it murder? Is it another Issa? What is the Issa? So what, if it's not Shevich Dama Odom Odom, then what is it? Okay. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. Now that we're into this Tosus, let's go a little bit further. Now, we saw yesterday, but maybe we should go and have a look again. Yeah. Let's do it with, in a bit more detail. Turn back to page one and let's learn a little piece <clears throat> a very important piece. You need to know this. These few lines of Gemara we're going to have to know really well. Okay? Because they link into this sugya and they are absolutely fundamental. Omar Avuna. So it's the second source on, on, on page one here. Gemara in Sanhedrin, Dafayin base, Omar base. Omar Avuna. Says Ravuna. Koton haroi deif nitten lahatsiloi benafshay. What would be if you have a wild 10-year-old kid running after you with an Uzi? Okay, an AK-47, whatever it is, an RPG. I don't know, it doesn't make a difference. Does it, whatever, right? And he very clearly is, 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 is coming to kill you. Now, we know, of course, that if somebody comes to kill you, you get them first, right? We do not turn the other cheek. Um, you, sorry. Yeah, yeah you, you, you can, this and that's it, but actually. Now, what would be about a cotton? Because a cotton, what is the, the halachic, persona of a cotton is deemed to be incapable of signif of, of sufficient he doesn't pass the threshold of kavana of awareness and knowing exactly what he's doing and therefore his mitzvahs are not mitzvahs his averas are not averas Hashem only speaks to somebody who has reached the age of majority 
Um, and at that point, he's deemed to have sufficient uh, conscious capacity, cognizant um, ability to be able to know what they're doing and therefore for their actions to imbue their actions with significance. Now, this kid is clearly running after you with an OZ. He said to you very clearly, I'm going, I'm going to kill you, you so-and-so. And he's definitely going to try and kill you. So is he a Rodef? Is he a Rodef or not? <coughs> Says Rav Huna, Cotton horoidef, nitten hatsila bin afshoi. A cotton comes running after you. You can, you kill him. You kill him. Says Rashi. Says Rashi. Top line, end of the top line here. Nitten hatsila bin afshoi. Kidi alpina le kamon. Reitseach nitten hatsila bin afshoi. As we learn later on. The high apple got the cotton of a lab bar. Kibule hasro hu legabe redifa dina kagodo. What's the issue over here? The issue over here is we always have to establish intent. And there is a concept of hasra, of warning somebody and saying, hello, you, are you, you're about to kill me? Okay. <coughs> Says the Gemara. Now, we can't establish intent with a cotton. Even if you were to have two witnesses handy, you wouldn't be able to establish intent. Says the Gemara. So we, we infer from here, from the fact that Rav Huna says that a cotton qualifies as a roidev, a pursuer, in so far as we able he forfeits his life. So from here we work out that clearly the whole concept of Roidev, you don't need Ainatsari Khasra. Obviously, the whole halacha of Roidev does not require Hasra. You can't say to somebody, I mean, there is probably also a practical side to it. Somebody's running after you with a machete. You can't say, well, you can't keep still, keep still just for two minutes while I go and find two unrelated male Jewish witnesses to, uh, to uh, you know, so that you can take Hasra. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of the joke about the, uh, you know, the, the, the two friends are hiking in the mountains and a, um, a grizzly bear comes along. So one of them sits down and starts putting on his sneakers. And the guy says... You're crazy. What are you doing? You'll never be able to. How is it going to help to put on your sneakers? You're never going to outrun a grizzly. He says, I don't need to outrun a grizzly. I only need to outrun you. Mm. <laughs> so we have a, you have a, a bit gruesome. So you have here a situation uh, uh, of, of a rider. Uh, uh, despite the impracticability, it's not, it's not practical to require a raid, uh, a hasra. Normally we always require, as you know, hasra, adim, for the purposes of establishing intent. From the fact, says the Gemara, that Ravuna says a cotton is also considered a raidaf, and therefore he forfeits his life. Obviously, we see from here that you don't need to establish intent in, through the regular procedure, the regular channels of Hasra. Why? Because with a cotton, it's a halachic impossibility. It is not possible to establish Hasra. So from the fact that Ravuna says that a cotton also qualifies as a raidaf, it must be, therefore, that there is no requirement... This is an exception to the general rule that you need hasra. Obviously, there must, you, no hasra is required. Okay. Well, so far, so good. What have we established? We've established that a cotton, if a kid comes running after you with an Uzi and you can see clearly what's going on, he, his life is forfeit. Despite the fact we cannot s establish um, intent or state of mind. Freg de Gemara. Beautiful question. Says the Gemara, I have a challenge to this, to you, um, Rav Huna, who says that a cotton can qualify as a roidaf, as a pursuer. In order to understand this, we're going to go down because his, his challenge is based on a Mishnah in Ahalas that everybody needs to know. Very famous. We actually mentioned it yesterday, but you've got it even clearer over here. Okay? Skip one s source and go down to the next one. You see, it's a Mishnah in Ahalas, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Mishnah Vav. Perak Zion Mishnah Vav. Ha'isha Shehi Maksha Leilaid. A woman, a very tragic case, a woman is in labor and she is, her life is in danger. And essentially it seems to be a scenario, so it seems to be, uh, it seems to be a scenario that she is not going to, either one of them can survive, either potentially either the fetus or her. She's makshalelit. Says the Mishnah, very, uh, quite gruesome in the way that the Mishnah says it, but uh, I, I, my sense is that it's done to be crystal clear. The, the, whoever's attending it will reaches in and cuts up the fetus into bits and brings it out limb by limb 
and thereby removes the danger from the mother and the mother can live. Why? Says the Mishnah, and the Mishnah gives us a reason. Missions don't always give us reasons, by the way, very often. Because her life comes before his. It's. It's. Well, yeah, I don't know if it's, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a male or female. No, That's a, maybe, yeah? Maybe it's because. Well, Chayov. Chayov is, a, uh, okay, it doesn't, it doesn't mean male, because it could be a female. No, so it's, it's, because yeah. it's in a different state of. Yes, yeah. yes, clearly. So it's interesting. Um, I, I, it's actually kind of almost occurring to me just now. Listen to the language. It, we're not saying that it, it isn't alive. There is no life there. We're saying there are different qualities of life, if you like. There is, there is, I don't want to put terms to it. I don't want to put words to it because I don't feel qualified to do so. But you see clearly there is a, 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 a hierarchy of Chayim. That you see. There's Chayeho, there is Chayov. That's the Lashon of Chazal. That's the Lashon of the Mishnah. There's Chayeho, there's Chayov, and Chayeho comes before Chayov. Fine. Interesting. Right? Yotzor Ruboi. And by the way, it's a shayla how to, the, what the girsa is, is it's Ruboi, or if it's Yotzor Roishoi. Yotzor, once it's born, in simple English, whatever the halachic um, definition of parturation is, Yotzor Ruboi, Ein Noigin Boi. Listen to how it's phrased. Ein Noigin Boi. Once the kid is born, and there's still obviously, the kid is not fully born. I mean, it's, I, I presume it's still partially um, inside the mother. Be actually, the halacha is that if it's the the uh, the, the, the crown, it's a uh, padachtoi. So it's still some of it is still inside. In other words, the cons the, the 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 danger is ongoing. There is still a threat to the the, the the kid, the fetus. Well, it's actually a kid. It's not a fetus. The kid is still posing a clear and present danger to the viability to the life of the mother. But the difference is that now it has the status of being born. Yotza Roishoi, a Neugin boy. Ein Neugin boy. Also interesting. It's it's phrased in the negative, the passive. We cannot touch a Neugin boy. Also, almost, you, 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 you can hear almost in the in the language of the Mishnah, let's stand back. Ein Neugin boy. You can't touch him. Why? She'ein Neugin Nefesh Mipnei Nefesh. Because you cannot establish a hierarchy of life. The very thing that we did in the previous phrase in the Mishnah. So when it's inside, then there is a, there is a hierarchy of Chaim. The minute it is born, they gain some sort of equivalence, and therefore, ain't no you can't touch him. She'ein doichin nefesh mipnei nefesh. We cannot make that assessment of being able to say that one nefesh overrides and has more value in any way than another nefesh. And that is the Mishnah. Let's go back now to our, let's go back to our Toysus, page two. You want to close that just for a minute? Yeah. As long as everybody promises not to fall asleep, yeah? Good. Okay. Let's go back to our Toysus. I mean, this Mishnah obviously is one that's going to need significant um, understanding. Significant understanding. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see a massive... Um, Massive Machlokes Rishonim, Rashi and the Rambam, most notably, um, how we, how we how to learn this. What is the what is the what is the the, the depth of understanding over here? Well, what is Pshat in this Mishnah? This Mishnah is one of the mam, um, uh, one of the the uh, classic seminal texts for understanding the uh, approaching this whole concept. But let's go back to Tosis. Let me remind you. Our Tosis here is in Sanhedrin and Tess, and we're talking about the idea that what? There can't be anything which is forbidden for a Gentile, but mutter for a Jew. Tosis challenges this from abortion. What's Tosis' answer? It's just not a capital. Oh! It's, it, it's, and we're not saying that it is mutter for a Jew just to wantonly go and abort. Of course not. It's also forbidden. But it's not at the same level. How do we know that it's not at the same level? There's nothing that... How do we know it's not at the same level, Kobe? How do we know that a Jew for Jew doing abortion is not at the same level? How do we know that? Because we say, um, Tinoki ben Yomech. Oh, very good. Because only, only Tinoki ben Yomech is, is a Hergei The implication being before, it's, it's okay. So it's, no, it's not okay. just means it's not Chayim Misa. Fine. So far, so good. Although we still don't know Pshat in Tosus in the sense of, so then what is the Makair? What, what level is the Chayim? That's what we're going to have to discover later. 
Now says Tosfos another question. Miukasha, the Mino Peg Ben Sayra Meira, Yotza Roishai, a Nagin by. Oh, sorry, I messed up here. We were in the middle of doing this. Sorry, I, I, I got sidetracked. I'm, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. We're going to come back to this Tosfos, but we, we, we were in the middle of doing this. We're actually in the middle of doing this Gemara. I apologize. I am based on the base. We're on back on page one. Rav Huna said, a cotton. Why did nobody stop me? <laughs> Rav Huna said, a cotton can be a roidaf. We, we work out from there that a cotton, that that roidaf doesn't need hasra, right? A survey, Fred de Gimore. A survey, Rav Chizda, Rav Huna. Rav Chizda challenges Rav Huna from the Mishnah. In all this that we've just learned, Yotza Roshai a Noigin boy, Lefish ain't dechin nefesh mipne nefesh. How can you, Rabbunna, tell me what? That a cotton, co a cotton can be a roider. You see from this Mishnah in all this that a cotton can't be a roider because the minute the child is born, we say don't touch him. Why don't touch him? He's a roider. You see that you're wrong. There's so much to analyze over here. Question number one. Why is the Gemara asking from the second part of the Mishnah? What about the first part of the Mishnah? The first part of the Mishnah would appear to be a, a support for Rav Huna. <laughs> what does the first part of the Mishnah say? That when he's inside, then we cut him up. So you could say that's different because he's not yet a nefesh. It's not the same as a cotton. Rav Huna was talking about a cotton. The first part is talking about when he's a fetus and for some reason has a different status. Okay, we're still going to have to look at that. But what does the Gemara ask over here? The Gemara said, the Gemara asks Rav, Rav Chizda, challenges Rav Huna, and says, how can you tell me that a cotton can't be a raid? If you see from a, that a, the cotton can be a raid, if you see from the mission Arlis, that once he's born, you can't touch him. So he understands that you can't touch him because he's not a raid. That's how Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda understands the Mishnah. Yeah? Let's do Rashi before we get to the answer. You with me? So far we have Rav Chizda's challenge on Rav Huna from the Mishnah in Ahlis. Says Rashi. And here it's going to be amazing to see how Rashi understands the Mishnah. Yotza Roshay. Rashi, you got Rashi Yotza Roshay, yes? Underlined. Be'isha ha'makshe le'leid. Rashi gives us the mission in case you're not a world expert on the mission in Ahlas. Rashi gives us the context. Be'isha ha'makshe le'leid. We're talking about a woman who is uh, in, uh, getting into difficulty in childbirth and the, the fetus is challenging her life. Umesukenes, she's in Sakona. Uktani reisha, it says in the reisha of the Mishnah, ha'chaya peshet ha'ziyodo ha'bechait chomitz yasalei varim. And here Rashi does something amazing. Rashi tells us, Pshat in the Mishnah in Olas, do you know why the midwife, can, or whoever it is, can reach her hand in and cut up the fetus? The calls man sheloyotza lavir ha'olam lav nefesh hu. Lav nefesh. It's not a nefesh. It is not a nefesh. Huh. Well, hold on. First of all, awesome Rashi, hey? This is a this is a Veltz Rashi. Lav nefeshu. It's not a nefesh. Ask me a question. So how? I mean, I would say how if if we now say it's not a nefesh in this context. Yeah. How, how can we say that anyone can get misa? Yeah. Very good. Very nefesh. good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Lav nefeshu. Like Noachites. <clears throat> well, Noachites we have a posuk. You can't get out of it. Noachites have a posuk. Ah, how can you have you have a pasuk. Uh, um, um, so, so the, so the, so Israel should. So you yeah, now you've got Tais's right, question. Right. Very good. Uh, you're jumping ahead, but that's awesome. That's very good. You're with the program. That's amazing. <laughs> Great. But this is an amazing Rashi. Lav nefeshu. I would ask. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm posh to yid. I'm not as, 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 <laughs> as smart as you. I, w I would ask uh, the, uh, the the mission in all us. Okay. The mission says Chayeho. What was the lotion? Chayeho kaidimin lechayov. Hello, Rashi. I have a question. It's not an nefesh, but it has chayim. You see that? The Mishnah says Chayeho kaidimin lechayov. So the Mishnah is characterizing this fetus as having life of some sort, except that there's a hierarchy of life before it's born. 
Her life comes before his life. Now Rashi, Rashi knew that. Yeah, Rashi knew the Mishnah. So we have a fascinating thing. It, Rashi saying on the one hand, lav nefeshu. It's not, an, it's not a nefesh, but it has chayim. Great pub quiz question, right? Can you give, tell me something which is alive, but is not a nefesh? It has chayim, but it's not a nefesh. An uber, according to Rashi. Fascinating, no? Mm-hmm. Lav nefesh, but it has chayim. Okay, let's keep going. We're not finished. We're not done. Yeah? Just like a side question, how does the Pintora define what has... Like, That's a very good question. I don't know. Okay. Uh, this is exactly... This is all part of the... This is all part of the discussion. Where we are framing halachically, you know, we're going back to what we mentioned yesterday about pro-life and pro-choice, and people throw out terms, and it's alive, and it's murder, and then life is, is, is a, is a, um, you know, it's a, on these posters, a life begins a conception, and I mean, you chose, you, you, you may feel that way, that doesn't make it so. You know, we could throw Ben Shapiro's thing back in his, in his face and say, you know, facts don't care about your feelings. Um, you feel that way, including you, Ben, uh, whoever, whoever. But that doesn't make it so. We have, we need to have an, an independent, objective standard. And only Hashem, who is, he is the arbiter of life. Yeah, he's the Makaira Chaim. He gives life. And he and his Torah will define for us what is life. So Rashi is saying, Lav Nefeshu, it is not a Nefesh. Yeah. Question, Rashi. May I ask you a question, Rashi? Does that mean, according to you, Rashi, I am I am allowed to just get rid of an Uba whenever I want because it's not a nefesh? Presumably not. Presumably not. Why? Because we're only saying this in the mission of Allah because he's challenging the mother's life. Again, the implication being that it, that it, it you can't just, like Tosis or like the Yaivetz and Biak of was saying in Tosis, that nobody's going to suggest really that it's 100% mutter l'chatchele because I'm bored on a Sunday afternoon just to abort my wife's fetus or whatever. Uh, or somebody else's wife's fetus, or something like that. So that's just to determine the hierarchy. Of that. Correct, but but that's because it's not a nefesh. Rashi uses a very specific term, nefesh. I, I would point out to you that we have uh, so far encountered possibly three different terms, and in law, terms are important. Mm. Yes, we have shefich dam ha'adam ba'adam. It's an adam. Mm. For the Noahide, it is defined as an adam inside another adam. Capital offense. And in fact, the way the Rambam formulated it, Ben Noyach, oh boy, Ben Noyach Shehorag Nefesh. Uh, here's where we, the fun starts. Go back to the Rambam, the bottom of page three. On the right. Ben Noyach Shehorag Nefesh. What's the loss in the Rambam? He kills a Nefesh. Afilu Uba Bimei Neragolov. What do you, you, there you have a definition from the Rambam. Would you say perhaps there's a Machlekes Rashi in Rambam here? Yeah? Seems to be. <laughs> so good. Because, Lab yeah, Rashi says Lav Nefesh, and the Rambam, lost on the Rambam is Ben Nech Shaharag Nefesh. How's the Rambam going to learn? Our Mishnah, we'll come back to that. The plot thickens. Do you see where we're, we're you, yeah. you've got to maintain a, a, a scope of what's going on over here and keep all the balls in the air and try and understand how does he understand that, how does he understand that? All the various, the text, that's how, that's how we learn a sugya. This is what we're doing. We're learning a sugya. Okay? We're learning a sugya. Let's go back to Rashi here, and then we'll go back to the Tosas, and we'll call it a day. Uh, and then you've got something to do Chazar on over the weekend. Hopefully. Yeah. Says Tosas, Rashi says over here, back to Rashi. Lav nefesh uvenitin lahargai, ulahat selesimai. Avol yotza roishai, einoigin voy lahargai. Once, however, he's been born... His, uh, his head has come out. Here, see, Rashi says Roshe, not Rubo, yeah? Uh, his head has come out. Ain't no way you can't touch with the To have a lay kiyilud. Have a lay kiyilud. At that stage, when his head has presented itself and is, is in la vira oilam, it's as if it's born. What? Like he's born, yeah. He's born, that's right. Have a lay kiyilud. Absolutely. Have a lay kiyilud. The ain't doichin nefesh mitne nefesh. And now we have two nefeshes. Now, now, according to Rashi, Beautiful. The notion of, of the Mishnah, according to Rashi, is beautiful. What does the Mishnah say in the, the, the Sefer of the Mishnah? Once it Yotzorei She'en Noigin Boi, why? She'en Doichin Nefesh, Mipnei Nefesh. Because according to Rashi, that's what's tra- changed over here. I now have two Nefeshes. Until now, I only had one Nefesh. Because the other one will have Nefeshu. Once his head has come out, 
Oh, uh oh, I have two nefesh. Hey, no, you can buy because you can't dig one nefesh, another nefesh. Oh, I don't know. Right? That's that's the that is what has changed. I now have a nefesh. Yeah. So that's how that is that is Rashi on. Oh, we didn't say his answers the Gemara. Remember, this was all to explain Rav Chizda's challenge on Rav Huna. again. Rav Huna said the cotton can be a roidaf. Says the Gemara. Obviously, you see from here that there's no no hasra is necessary. Says Rav Chizda, what do you mean? I'll show you that a cotton can't be a nefesh. A, a cotton can't be a roidaf. Why? Because once it's born, we say. You can't, you can't kill him. Why not? He's a, he's a, according to you, Rav Huna, once he's born, he's right of his mother. Why can't you kill him? You, Rav Huna, say that a cotton can be a right of. We now have a cotton who's a right of. He's born and he's being right of his mother. Why don't we just apply the mission in Arlas to say, cut him up? What's going on? Why don't we apply the first part? Challenge on Rav Huna. The am I, Freddy Gemara, Raidafu. Says the Gemara, I don't understand, he's a right of. Answers the Gemara, an incredible answer. And this is going to need a lot of work. Shani Hossam. Really, Rav Huna is correct. And in a, in a conventional case, in a regular case, of course, a cotton can qualify as a roidaf. And from here, we need, we see that you don't need hasra when it comes to a roidaf. A cotton runs after you with an uzi. You don't stop and ask questions. He forfeits his life. But this scenario is a very... Is, 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 is an unusual, it's an aberration, it's an anomaly, it's an unusual situation. Why? Shani Hossam, Dimishmaya Koradfila. Minashamayim Koradfila. Now, the, the, the Redifus over here is not instigated by the cotton of his or her own volition. Mm -hmm. But it is engineered by Shamayim. In other words, the cotton, even if they would have had dast, wouldn't say, you know what, I think I'm going to really rebel against this host. Um, and I'm really going to, you know, put her life in danger. Of course not. If this is something which is, who decided that this mother should be, unlike the cotton, a regular 10-year-old who picks up a gun. He, may know, he has a certain amount of dast and he chooses, he makes a choice and he does that, Right. In this situation, Hashem decided that this is going to be a dangerous medical complication. And so here is different because it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an exception to the regular case of Radev. That's what the Gemara is answering. Ravuna is right. In a regular case, a cotton can be a Radev. But here, and I just want to do one Rashi with you, small Rashi. Over here, it's Shani Hossa, Mishmaya Koradvala. Says Rashi, Mishmaya Koradvala. Le a one word Rashi, my friends, what is Rashi saying? Yes. Well what what has Rashi added to the understanding of this sugya? Why does Rashi what's wrong? What would what could I have said otherwise? Why did Rashi have the need even to comment? Uh, I'll tell you what I think, but I'm happy if you've got any thoughts. It is possible to learn the sugya slightly differently and to say this is a situation, you could say, in here, the cotton isn't a radaf at all. The cotton is not a radaf at all. This is a, a heavenly engineered situation. But he, the Shamayim is the radaf, rega, rega. And this is going to be really important in the Lomdas when we get to Reb Chaim. You could have let this sugya, but the answer is, Shani Hossam, Mishamaya Karadvala. Shamayim is being radaf her, not her kid. Shamayim, says Rashi, no. Says Rashi, Koshmai Korad one word Rashi, Le'ime, to his mother. What do you mean? And Rashi's telling me there is agency here. Let's be a bit legal, a bit formal for a minute. There is agency here. It is, the cotton is the rider. His mother, Minashamayim, they made, Minashamayim, they turned him into the rider of his mother. But he is the rider. But not because... Oh. He has the intention, but because he's the cause of danger. So but dead. but he is. We identify him yeah. in in hal. Yeah. He now has a halachic identity, a halachic persona as a roidaf, except that he is. He didn't choose to do so. Shamayim created, turned him into a roidaf. There's almost a level of compulsion. He is a roidaf nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So normally, in other words, we're not saying he's not a roidaf at all. You could have learned the sugya very differently, by the way. You could potentially let the answer the Gemara without this one word Rashi. 
It's an incredible. You see how one word Rashi, Le'imete, his mother. You could have learned the Gemara differently. There is no, the, Shamayim is the Radef, not him. He's not the Radef. You, that's how you could have learned. And Rashi says, no, that's not what it means. What's enough How are we going to see this different? That we're going to have to see next week. And we are, we still, I remind you, this was all to then, we need to, where we're going to start next week. Blinader, somebody remind me on Monday. We're going to start with the, the, the question of Toysus over the top over here, which we're, which we're still in the middle of doing. Okay? Okay. Shkayach. Okay.